Okay. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the session. We are very excited to be here talking about our Swift implementation, so thank you very much for coming. My name is Max Katch. I'm a senior infrastructure engineer and a member of the Cloud Builders team at Mercado Libre. Together with Maximiliano, we will show you how Mercado Libre is freeing itself from expensive NFS storage appliances by simply using OpenStack Swift on top of cheap commodity hardware. If uh, you don't know uh, Swift yet, uh, it is a highly scalable, fault tolerant, and distributed object storage solution. It has a flexible and intuitive RESTful API that allows you to store large amounts of data. In this session, we will walk you through the different stages of our architecture. I will start talking about what we had at the beginning, how we, uh, what problems we needed to solve, our move to the cloud, and then Maximiliano will talk more in depth about our Swift uh, implementation, how we improve the solution, and also he will share some tips uh, and experiences about uh, what we did. But I'm sure some of you never heard about MercadoLibre.com, so let me give you a short introduction about the company and what challenges we have today. Mercado Libre is the leader e-commerce platform in Latin America. It is the eighth largest online retailer in the world, and it is one of the fastest growing companies of 2012. It has presence over 14 countries, and <clears throat> including the, the biggest in the region, Brazil, Argentina, and Mexico. And we have more than 81 million registered users. Now that we are an open platform, our APIs receive more than 2.5 million uh, requests per minute, and we have around four gigabytes of bandwidth uh, per second. This number increases to, uh, on holiday season, to four million requests per minute, and around six gigabytes of uh, bandwidth per second. We have uh, more than 1,600 employees, uh, including an IT staff of more than 380 people between developers and engineers. But to get here, we had to walk a long way and change a lot of our infrastructure. So let me tell you how we started. We felt like uh, being a caveman in the Stone Age because Mercado Libre had a monolithic uh, application uh, product that it was running on uh, physical servers and it, we were storing everything in a single NFS volume. As the site grew, uh, we started to, we implemented a flat same virtualization, uh, but we kept storing more and more data on the same uh, NFS storage appliances. And as you know, this is hard to scale up, and, and when you have problems, uh, it's difficult to manage the maintenance. So uh, let me give you some examples of uh, why I wanted to change. First, because we had ISCSI block volumes, and they, we needed to manually create them, and they were directly attached to physical and virtual uh, servers. This was uh, hard to troubleshoot, and we wanted to change that. Um, we also had uh, NFS volumes that were mounted on top of other mount points, and this was uh, confusing us, and we had also problems uh, because we had even late data loss. Uh, we have also <clears throat> Uh, performance issues when purging files because we had millions stored into the same directory. This was out of control. Uh, so this seriously affected other applications stored on the same uh, filer. So as you can see, every single event happening on the, on the storage side was affecting our platform. Uh, even we had peaks and even downtime because of that. So obviously, uh, the wheel wasn't rolling for us. Uh, we have more, by this time, we have more than 50 terabytes of uh, images and site data stored in the same place. We had also uh, just one storage uh, cluster per data, centing, per data center, taking all the bullets and receiving more than one million IOPS per second. We were very slow in terms of uh, deploying new infrastructure and analyzing issues, and the way things were, we couldn't really handle a caching layer outage. So, the performance wasn't good as the IT department was tagged as a bottleneck in the company, and the overall situation was pretty bad for us. So 
<clears throat> we knew this couldn't go on any longer because we felt like we were chasing an unreachable carrot. Uh, there was no point adding more and more uh, hardware into our infrastructure if we couldn't take out some of the complexity uh, that we had in our architecture and in the way, if we couldn't simplify the way we work in our workflow. So we dream about a solution where we could uh, have no vendor lock-ins, where it will be flexible, and uh, where it will be possible to scale out just uh, using uh, cheap hardware. So we realized that what we needed was a uh, cloud, and together with it to move the storage layer to, to the cloud to provide the storage as a service uh, solution. Then we will be happy. So we got fed up and we decided it was time to fight back. It was a uh, time for a big change uh, of paradigm in the way we work, in the way we buy hardware, in the way we deploy it, in the way we use our infrastructure and our human resources. So <clears throat> that's when we decided uh, to take a leap of faith and move to the clouds. And I can tell you the, the flight was, had some turbulence, but in the end uh, we succeeded. And let me tell you the biggest changes we had in our architecture. First of all, we changed from a high DevOps model to an OOPS model. What this means is that now, instead of having to interact with our internal users, we are now free and we can focus on what really matters to us, which is uh, developing and researching new products and features for our cloud. Second, we moved, we migrated our flat and send uh, manual virtualization, and we deploy a full OpenStack uh, compute cloud. Now our cloud users are able to provision their own demands uh, with simple HTTP calls so they can get all their resources they need uh, freeing us and we are not the bottleneck anymore. Third, we stop uh, making handcrafted virtual machines using the, you know, the command line or scripts and uh, we started to fully automate the installation, configuration and deployment of these virtual machines using Chef. Uh, this freed us uh, also some uh, valuable and precious time because you have a lot of uh, recipes and cookbooks that you can download and just use. Fourth, we changed from stateful to stateless. And this was a really important point because we needed to work hard to change our developers' mind. Uh, they needed to understand that uh, resources in the cloud will eventually fail. And with that in mind, they can now uh, create uh, applications and services with, uh, that they are fault tolerant by design, so they are cloud ready. And fifth, we stop what we used to do before that we created manually, we provisioned the volumes, the storage volumes, and now we have storage as a service solution. Now also our cloud uh, users are able to create uh, volumes, block volumes for themselves, they can take snapshots if they want, they can destroy them, attach them, detach them from instances, and uh, what's more important, we are freeing uh, ourselves from the NFS volumes, and now they are using uh, Swift as a backend to store all their uh, files. So as you can see, what we did was uh, to change our crappy and flat infrastructure, and we transform it into an inf a full infrastructure as a service. And also, uh, with this big change, we managed to upgrade our monolithic application and we transform it also into a full open and distributed uh, platform. So we can say that, fuck yeah, we did it. <laughs> we changed it and we evolved. Now we are not the cavern in the Stone Age, so we reached the clouds. And let me tell you why we succeeded in this. It was because we chose OpenStack and we chose also Swift. First of all, we choose them because we love open source. It's in our DNA and we love the philosophy behind it. And I can tell you that MercadoLibre.com is almost entirely running and using uh, open source software. Also, we love that it is written in Python because we can take a look into the OpenStack code, we can hack it, we can debug it, we can change it to, and customize it to our own needs. And we can also give back to the community, submitting bugs in Launchpad or submitting uh, patches. Also, as you know, open source, uh, you have no vendor lock-in, 
you can save cost, and our managers love that. And also, because OpenStack was built uh, by Rackspace and NASA, they had uh, these big, uh, large uh, infrastructures. So it was built with and conceived with scalability in mind, and also it's high available. And as you know, uh, everything in uh, OpenStack is a, a, a core component that has a RESTful API, so you can, you can use it and you can interact with these components and you can develop your own tools as we did in uh, Mercado Libre. And so, because also we are using it uh, OpenStack since the very release, so we feel very comfortable about it. We know it from the inside out. So last and finally, our OpenStack grew a lot in the last uh, two years. It got a lot of hype. So it is now a fully mature cloud OS. You can use it, and in every new release, you have a lot of very exciting new features. So that's why we stick to OpenStack. And now let me tell you what we are running, uh, what versions of uh, OpenStack we are using in our cloud uh, production in MercadoLibre.com. We are using, uh, <clears throat> for the whole cloud, we are using uh, Nova, the Essex release. We use it to run more than 7,000 virtual instances that they are running on top of uh, more than 1,000 physical servers, okay? The whole uh, website, I can tell you, is running on this architecture. We have it in production running, and it's working very well, and we are very happy. Second, we have uh, Keystone, the SX release also. We integrated it with our LDAP uh, servers, and that means that any internal users can just uh, take resources from the cloud without any problems, and also we use it to authenticate our internal applications, okay? We have also Glance, the SX release, uh, for image provisioning. We mainly use uh, Ubuntu 12.04, which is the long-term support of, we also have support from Canonical, so it's very useful for us. And we also have some Red Hat uh, instances images uh, for better compatibility with our Oracle databases. We also have Quantum, we have it uh, also the SX release. Uh, we mainly use it for be better isolation of specific parts of our cloud that we need an extra layer of security on the network side. And last, we have uh, for our Swift cluster implementation, we are using the Folsom release. And now I will invite Maximiliano to tell us more in detail what we have. <clears throat> Thanks. That's, yeah, okay. So first of all, hello to everyone. My name is Maximiliano Venecio, and I am a cloud builder from MercadoLibre.com. And I will start talking about our first OpenStack Swift deployment, and then we will go through uh, different points that we considered important in the process to, to get our current OpenStack Swift deployment. So as you can see in this picture, we install uh, 24 storage nodes divided in uh, two of our data centers in Virginia that uh, we configured with uh, four hard disk drives of three terabytes each one, uh, 64 gigs of RAM, and two hexa-core processors. We, insta we installed there the entire Swift package in version 1.4.8, that is the SX release, and we configure uh, all the service, the three main services, account, container, and uh, object services, and also the background services, uh, replicator, updater, and auditor, uh, to run in all the storage nodes. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we create uh, four ring zones, uh, divided in, in both places also, and three, we manage three co uh, replicas. So this is to, to ensure that we will have uh, at least one copy of each object in our cluster living in both places. And we can also see 12 proxy nodes. Uh, there are not 12, but we have 12. 12 proxy nodes uh, divided in two groups that expose the HTTP Swift API and also have a uh, configure uh, memcache to cache uh, ring metadata. And a load balancer layer, uh, as you can see, uh, we, uh, that is composed by BIPFI. We use BIPFI to uh, to balance traffic between, between uh, those proxy groups. And you can notice Keystone there in the middle of the proxy groups. 
and Keystone is a really important part of our infrastructure. And it's mainly because uh, we have about 100 of departments uh, inside Mercado Libre uh, from our internal users. And we needed the flexibility to uh, deny or grant the access to many uh, cloud services and cloud applications, uh, depending on the department and the user roles that they have. So we use Keystone to do that. And we also integrated Keystone with Swift. Well, um, finally, we connect all that infrastructure with a 2G uh, traffic villain, a single villain. And we use uh, two uh, one gigabit interfaces, uh, two one gigabit interfaces in each one of the storage and proxy nodes in bonding mode uh, link aggregation. So we went to production like that, and all well, the results was not as we expected. And there are many reasons why we could not uh, reach our stated goals, and we listed here, so we can take a look. Slow response times, concurrency issues, big issues with the support from the hardware side. All traffic to the same villain, uh, killing Keystone due to the lack of token caching, no more than 60k RPM peaks, and lack in a swift architecture knowledge. So I will walk through those different points, and I will try to share uh, to share, share you our experience solving that, solving that point. And I will start with Keystone, uh, killing Keystone due to the lack of token caching. As you know, uh, each one of the HTTPs uh, requests in Swift needs to be authorized by Keystone by default. And this authorization process uh, causes an increment of traffic in our Keystone cluster. And that impacts directly in uh, the Keystone service. So as a result of that, we, we got uh, an extra overhead in each one of the HTTP requests in the Swift API. So to solve that, we, uh, we start to cache in tokens in our proxies memcache. Okay. And actually, this solved that problem because reduce the uh, traffic in our Keystone cluster, but also uh, reduce the, uh, the overhead in all the uh, private HTTP requests in, Swift, in the Swift API. But we also needed to be prepared to, uh, to that increment in traffic in, uh, in our Keystone cluster, so we also added more uh, servers in that, in that cluster. OK, so, some configurations, uh, some uh, hardware uh, considerations. Uh, Hire good service support and enterprise grade SATA drives. Well, uh, those are two points that we need to take care of using Swift and uh, large scale cluster of, of commodity hardware. And that's it. It's mainly because uh, all our drives in our Swift cluster are under a heavy concurrent write load around the clock. And this load may cause many broken drives. Uh, that we need to replace uh, as soon as possible to avoid performance issues. So uh, believe me that we spend um, a lot of time fighting with our service support to uh, replace that broken drives. So high good service support uh, give us better response time in case of failures for that, for that replacement. And enterprise-grade enterprise grade SATA drives uh, will give us better performance in all our Swift uh, services and also reduce the failure rate uh, of our drives in our cluster. So we think that in this kind of applications, enterprise-grade uh, SARA drives make the difference because give us better performance, more durability, and a good balance between cost and benefits. We now use uh, flash drive modules to install the operating system of our uh, storage and proxy nodes. And this comes to solve uh, a problem that we had in the previous OpenStack uh, Swift deployment. And was that we installed the operating system in the same drives that we installed the uh, rest of the Swift services. And when, uh, when one of those drives fail, the entire server fail. Okay, So we now uh, avoid that issue using uh, Saradom's modules to install the operating system. And well, now we are using solid state drives for account and container services. As you know, account and container services use SQLite file to uh, to upgrade uh, data uh, about your account and containers. So with solid state drives, we improve the concurrency access and the IO performance of uh, those services. So now we use solid state drives for account and container services, and we, let, we leave the rest of the enterprise grade drives, uh, SARA drives, to be used by the object service. 
And on the network side, we uh, upgraded from one gigabit to 10 gigabit uh, network interfaces, also to improve throughput and uh, performance in our networks. Well, I think that this is the most important slide regarding the uh, performance improvement in our uh, current uh, OpenStack Swift deployment. So isolate account and container services from the object services. Well, as I said in the previous slide, account and container services use SQLite files to, to store data, metadata about your uh, account and containers in your, in your cluster. And on the other hand, the object service uh, stores, retrieve, uh, delete, and update binary files in your file systems with extended attributes. And this last service is the more I.O. intensive. So when, when we mix uh, account and container and object service in the same storage nodes and we configure those services to use the same drives, uh, well, we get a performance degradation in all of them. And this is for the impact that the object service has in all our drives. So uh, a good practice to avoid that is to isolate account and container services from the object services, preferably using solid state drive for account and container service, as I said in the previous slide. Okay. So, uh, well, as I said, also, uh, and, uh, I say again, uh, we uh, use solid state drive for a kernel container and let the rest of the SARA drives to be used by the option services. And in addition to that, our users uh, split the, uh, the amount of containers that they use to improve the uh, uh, concurrent write performance of their applications. And this is because this way they can, uh, they can balance uh, their uh, write operations between different SQLite files, okay? And this is really important when you have fast clients. That is our case. Uh, we have a big, a big amount of fast clients that generate a big amount of uh, concurrent traffic of uh, small objects in our Swift service. So multiplying the amount of containers is a good, uh, a good advice to uh, improve the performance uh, of their uh, users. And we also multiply the amount of drives in our cluster to have a better balance of IOPS. Uh, well, uh, yeah, we also uh, we, uh, have a better balance of IOPS multiplying the amount of drives and also have a better uh, distribution of uh, ring partitions across our ring drives uh, in our three main rings. So now we uh, decrease the uh, size of our drives and increase the, uh, the amount of drives in our cluster. And on the network side, well, we use two different network VLANs to isolate uh, internal from the external traffic. As you know, uh, the uh, background processes, the um, consistency processes, uh, replicator, for example, generate a big amount of traffic using rsync to, uh, to uh, ensure the consistency of uh, the data across your cluster. And by the other way, we have the, a big amount of traffic that comes from our proxies to our storage nodes. So uh, we now isolate these two kinds of traffics using two different uh, VLANs of 10 gigabits each one. Okay, so uh, it's really important also for us to have a good monitoring of all the pieces of our Swift cluster. So, well, we use Neuralic to monitor our Swift cluster times and traffic. And well, this is mainly because uh, Mercado Libre has been using Neuralic for a long time to monitor different kind of applications. So here we just took advantage of that and we integrated uh, Neuralic in our Swift proxies. That is really easy, by the way. And with Neuralic, we can uh, figure out quickly that we are having some issue uh, in some part of our Keystone cluster, of our Swift cluster, sorry. Or uh, we also can figure out quickly that we are that some user is changing the way in which they use uh, our Swift uh, service. So it's really useful for us, uh, and for that reason, we use Neuralic. But you can use also StatC. StatC comes integrated with Swift. Uh, it's really easy to configure, uh, it's really easy to install, and you can use StatSD to uh, get detailed operational metrics uh, in real time uh, from your different services in Swift. We are testing uh, StatSD and we are planning to implement that in the next uh, months. And we, will, you, we use also Kafka. Kafka, Kafka is an open source distributed messaging service, and we use Kafka to, to centralize 
all logs from our storage nodes and our uh, proxy nodes in a centralized repository to make future analysis with all that information. So we can uh, make analysis, for example, with Hadoop. And well, Drive Audit, uh, as you know, Drive Audit is the uh, Swift service that analyzes all your drives, all your storage node drives, looking for uh, IO, uh, IO errors. So we customize Drive Audit to send us emails as soon as something happened in, in some one of uh, our drives. So uh, this way we uh, also uh, improve the response time in case of failures. And we have also custom scripts to check the consistency of the ring and configuration files. As you know, uh, we change uh, our ring files uh, many times because we need to add new drives or remove uh, broken drives or change, wa change weights. So uh, each time that you, uh, that you make a change in your, uh, in your ring files, you need to make a rebalance and uh, replicate all that files across your cluster. So it's really important to, to check the consistency to ensure that you have the same uh, files in all your uh, nodes of your cluster to avoid uh, big issues uh, in the Swift service. So we have custom scripts that uh, check the consistency of our ring files across our cluster. And we know, we know that uh, there is a Swift Recon service that uh, is uh, really useful to do that. We are testing uh, Swift Recon and we uh, are planning to implement that in the next months. But what if something fails? Um, everything will fail. So, uh, well, uh, hardware failures are really common using Swift and, uh, and large-scale clusters of commodity hardware uh, because of the commodity hardware. Uh, and we know that Swift can handle that failures, uh, the most kind of failures. But in some, in some cases, we saw some performance degradation caused by that, that handling. So we need to know what we need to do in case of failures. If a storage node fail uh, and we can solve it quickly, we just remove all, that, all the drives from that storage nodes uh, from our ring. And we do it gradually by decreasing the, uh, the drive weight in, uh, in each one of the drives. Uh, if a single drive fail, uh, well, the impact in the performance is obviously lower, but also if if we can't uh, if we can't uh, solve that issue uh, quickly, we just remove that drive from our ring. And if a proxy server fails, we have good uh, F5 health monitor to detect that uh, proxy, that broken proxy or that failed proxy, quickly and remove that proxy immediately from our uh, F5 proxy pool because that could cause uh, big issues in our Swift API. So, well, here we have the uh, architecture uh, as a result of all that previous points. And as you can see here, we have now uh, 32 storage nodes we have uh, uh, that are configured uh, with uh, 12 hard disk drives, enterprise uh, grade SATA drives, so we have three times more drives than the first time. Uh, we multiply the amount of drives that we use to have the advance. Uh, our config also with two solid state drives for a Canon container. So we had the isolation of, uh, of the service in two layers, a Canon container and the object service layer. Uh, we are using SATA DOMs and uh, well, we, are, we have 64 gigs of RAM and two exacore processors. Uh, that's the, that's the same. Uh, we divide all uh, storage nodes in, in, two, in the two data centers uh, as, the, as the first time, and we have the same uh, ring zones configuration and replicas. We have 18 proxy nodes now. We have more proxy nodes to, uh, to uh, improve throughput. Uh, that are a caching token, so we have a token caching layer now, and are caching also ring metadata. We have the same load balancer layer uh, composed by BIPA5. And we have a bigger keystone cluster to support the traffic that comes from Swift. And we connect now all that infrastructure with two uh, traffic bills of 10 gigabits uh, each one. So we have the uh, internal traffic and the external traffic bill. Okay, so 
This, this uh, architecture looks uh, similar than the first one, but uh, here we applied all the previous points uh, that we saw to, uh, to deploy a completely different architecture. And well, the results are, are also really different because we are serving, uh, we are about 70% faster. We are serving uh, 300K RPM average. We have better service support with a better response time in case of failures and a lower failure rate because of hardware. So we are stronger and we are proactive. Okay, so here we have some lessons to learn. Hardware buy-in planning is the key because we have good service support to uh, reduce response times. Uh, we have uh, better hardware. We have solid state drives. We have enterprise grade drives. We have SATA DOMs modules to install the operating system. We have better uh, network interfaces. Size matters because we multiply the amount of drives that we, uh, that we use in our Keystone cluster to uh, have better balance of IOPS. Uh, well, divide and conquer because we isolate some parts of our services to, to, have, to increase the performance. And it's not bandwidth throughput because we don't have a bandwidth issue by now. So it's, it's all about throughput. And we are human hashing the hashing ring uh, because we need to uh, be sure that we have the same uh, ring files in all our clusters. Uh, so we, we need to check the consistency of all that uh, ring files across our clusters. And hardware we fail and we fail a lot. Well, we need to, be, we need to know what we need to do in case of failures, okay? And that's all. Uh, it's Q&A time, so, uh, well, we have time for a few questions. Yeah, also, sorry, <coughs> before that, uh, give to, our to contact go. details in case uh, you want to write us or have yep. any questions. Yeah, that's one. Uh, well, that depends of your traffic. Uh, uh, we can notice that we need more proxies because our times are uh, low. Uh, so, uh, no, we, yeah, we, are, we use New Relic to monitor our traffic in uh, our Swift traffic. So, we can notice that, that we are having some issue in our uh, response times. And we need to uh, add more proxies. Okay, but we have proxies today to support a big amount of traffic. Yeah. How many servers do you have in the How many? Servers do we have in the Kiston cluster? Uh, have, uh, 20, uh, right? About, yeah, 20, 20, 20 instances, good. yeah. No, no, it's, no, no. Uh, it's also for Nova. Yeah. yeah, we have it for a lot of services, the core, uh, OpenStack uh, components that I mentioned before. Uh, we are also using it for some internal applications because uh, we integrated it with our LDAP servers so we can authenticate also internal users and use that. How many memcache? Well, the same, the same amount of proxies because we have memcache in the same server that proxies. So we use proxies and memcache in the same server. Yeah. Actually, Bankash comes uh, integrated with, with your Swift proxy service. Yeah. <laughs> with Gluster? No, in the, in the meantime, we, we are using this. Uh, we use uh, XFS, and we, we thought about uh, checking Ceph uh, because we also want to integrate it with other parts of uh, our OpenStack uh, deployment. But no, we, in the meantime, we didn't uh, thought about uh, implementing Gluster. XFS is XFS, XFS, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, on the use case. Yeah, in, on in our case, this worked yeah. for us because we have fast clients and we, we know that we didn't reach, a, a, we didn't have a, too much load on the CPU side. Yeah. Uh, we had two extra cores, so it's, it's a big amount. Of so, so the bottleneck was on the drives. That's why we choose to put the high, higher density storage nodes with the 12 drives instead of uh, four as the, as the first implementation. Yep. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, yeah. It's not easy, but we use uh, New Relic uh, also to monitor the, the API. Uh, we, have, we have also, we are using it uh, to check the server workload, uh, you can check the I/O uh, network on the network yeah. on the. On but, the but it's drive. like it's, all, it's always in the, in your drives uh, because. But it's it's, it's usually in our drives, yeah. yeah. But uh, with the, you need a uh, really good uh, monitoring system uh, to check uh, which layer you are having issues. It's usually on the. We usually hit it on the hard drive side. Uh, we also sometimes, you, you, if you have, that's why we also upgraded from one gigabit to 10 gigabit to uh, have a better throughput. Uh, but it's usually, in our case, it was uh, where we had the problems. Uh, so. No, actually, uh, we are, as he said before, Maximiliano, we are using custom scripts uh, to replicate all to green replicate when we rebalance. And check uh, the consistency, yeah. Yeah, we, we actually are not using it for, no. for that. We use it mainly for the installation and configuration of our instances when they are born, launch it. We also want to make this wider use, uh, Chef, because it grew a lot also with recipes and cookbooks, so we need to uh, implement everything, yeah. Yep. Total size of, of disks? Yes, 32. Uh, yeah, we have around uh, a quarter yeah. to 250 uh, gigabytes, 250 giga, uh, terabytes, terabytes, sorry. Yeah, in uh, terms of size. Terabytes. This is the current uh, implementation we have, but uh, as you know, you can add more hardware, you can scale out and put more hardware because uh, you can distribute the partitions in your ring and then you start moving data and using more uh, space. Yeah, our, our final size, uh, I can't remember our final size because that uh, give us many petabytes. We have, uh, I don't know. <laughs> We have a lot because we have, as, as we, yeah. we told you before, we have fast clients. Our internal clients are mainly fast clients. Uh, we started to migrate some uh, the images uh, of our, what we had in the storage appliances. We started to migrate it to, to the Swift uh, solution. So we mainly have a lot of uh, small objects uh, between, I would say, between 40K until 100k kilobytes, more or less. Uh, we have, uh, we use it also. Some of our internal clients use it to store large uh, files, but it's it's very a small, very small traffic. We have a mix. Yep. No, uh, actually, as I said, all this move from the old infrastructure to the new one. So we needed to, to work and talk with our developers, our internal users, uh, because they needed to adapt to, the, to this new cloud and this new type of resources so they can be able to talk and to interact with the APIs. And so uh, for that, uh, not everyone is migrating just uh, you know, as fast as others. 
but they are trying to do it because uh, we have a lot of benefits uh, because it's distributed, you have fault tolerance, um, so you have better performance than NFS and you don't have a bottleneck, you, are, you have no vendor lock-in, so that's why it's better and everyone is moving faster or, or slower, but they are moving. The main use case, uh, well, we have a mix of users, uh, of internal users in our company. So they use Swift for everything. Uh, we are planning to move, uh, we are planning to move the, the pictures, the images of our site uh, to Swift, but we are planning to do that. So it, it's just a plan. And the other question? Factor? Yeah, we have three, ah, three, three replicas. We have three yes, replicas. Yes. As we explained, we have two data centers where we have this uh, cluster. and three replicas, so we ensure that we will have at least one copy of each one of the objects. Yeah, in, in case both, of uh, disaster recovery, places. you have. Yep. Uh, no. No, no, because yet. they are physically close, so we have a low latency interconnect between mm -hmm. those, but we are planning to, uh, to move some part of Swift to Atlanta, to another data center. So maybe we will do that. We'll, we'll uh, do that. Yeah. We need to test it, but yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Uh, the way it is working right now, it's it's working very well for us, as you saw and as we told you. The first implementation wasn't good, and we learned a lot about it. And that's why we changed and we arrived to this uh, solution. Uh, and I think it, uh, it's really coupled to the way your clients work with it. So in, because we have uh, fast clients, and uh, the way this, is, uh, the lay, this layout is working very well for us, I think maybe if the, our clients change the, the way they use it, then maybe we will need to adapt to their needs. Yeah. But because we, are, we have fast clients, this is the way it is distributed, and it's working very well for us. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, yeah, uh, right now we, we have internal users, but we don't build them yet. <laughs> uh, so we might do that in the future. We are we implemented this, and we are trying to add, as as Maximiliano told you, we are planning to implement StatsD that gives you a better metrics uh, of usage about your Swift implementation solution. Yeah, also Silometer is uh, integrated with Swift. Uh, I saw yeah, that, so uh, we we more. might in the future, but right now we are not building anyone. So. We, we just keep it for our internal use to, to see how everyone is using. Every time a new client arrives, uh, we check their usage and their usage patterns, and, but uh, not yet. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we are SSDs? Yeah. yeah, we had two SSDs per, per storage node. Yeah. No, no, no. They are not are ready rated. If they are rated together, right. rated? No, no, no. No, no. no every, every what? Okay, sorry. Uh, what you want to do is to to keep uh, the hardware layer as simple as possible because you want to be able to replace in case of any failure. You want to to be able to replace this. So we use commodity hardware, and, and every storage node has its own uh, SSD file um, okay. drives and enterprise grade SATA drives. So if in, in case of any failure, you can just take out the machine, the drives, hot swap them, okay? So we don't have more time. Uh, uh, yeah, so I think we, we can, need to. We can, answer we can go out if you want. Yeah, we can also go outside. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. So here it is. We want to thank you. And if you have any question or want to yeah. contact us, 
Good luck. Thank you. Thank you.